All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Going to be touching on the top props on this college football slate. Let's go ahead and get into it. And guys, real quickly, right before we get into that, I just want to mention some little updates that I had made to the 9 to 5 cheat sheet. This is going to be available for anyone that is a site member. Link in the description below. It is just $10 a month. Uh, but what I went ahead and did is I added in a specific underdog sheet for both NFL and also college football. I'm going to be working on adding in like a specific seat a uh, sheet for DraftKings, uh, FanDuel, you know, the popular sports books as well. But I want to start off there. So we have underdog specific sheet. You click on that and we're going to see our favorite lines for the day as well. The thing that I like the most is that we are going to see a lot of fantasy score props are going to be the one that are popping up when I go through this. And what I had went ahead and done is like, let's say I'm on underdog right now. The sports books projections that we have in there are curated for underdog scoring. And so is the prize picks line so that we can better gauge if the line that we're getting is good or bad. And what I mean by that is underdog is half point PPR, prize picks is full point PPR. And how did I determine those? Well, for the sports books, it's just the average receptions prop for them. And for underdog, it's the average receptions prop that they have. Now, if one or the other is incomplete, meaning like a lot of times underdog won't give us a receptions prop for a certain player or whatnot. That's fine. Then it defaults to the sports books, what they're giving us for the reception. And then the last checks and balances, if those two, if we don't have any for those two, then it goes to the projection data, which will always have some sort of average base uh, projection in there. So I just want to call that out. I'm excited to get that out to you guys. It's been something I've been meaning to do. Uh, you know, it just takes time. And I am just going to be focusing in on all the Saturday games. So I'm going to click off of the Friday night games. And so now here we go. Let's start with this one. All right. So looking at this game, we got Missouri. And this is going to be one of the more appealing games on the slate. I am using the Odds Jam Sportsbook view. If you guys want access to something like this, uh, click the link in the description below, oddsjam.com. Use promo code 9 to five to get 25% off. Uh, but we can see this game is going to be a nice game to attack. Not only is it supposed to be high scoring, it is supposed to be a close game as well, which to me is going to be huge. When we look at something like DVP as well, we're going to notice, and I'll just sort by points per game, Missouri is probably going to be a team that we want to be attacking. And then so is LSU. So I do think that this game has the potential for some stacking opportunities as well. So to me, and I know this line will probably be adjusted, but this line that we're getting right here for Cody is probably going to be one that we want to go ahead and attack. And if we just kind of look at his uh, game log here on DraftKings. We'll see that basically all their games have been close there as well. And for the most part, he has been maybe a little bit touchdown dependent in terms of getting the over or not. But in such a high scoring game, I think we would all kind of expect that maybe that's there. Um, the one pause, let's just call it out like the Thursday night football game. You know, that was expected to be a game in which Washington was winning. Like no one was expecting the Bears to do what they did, especially in that fashion. Brian Robinson, a lot of people love for over fantasy score. Very much a touchdown dependent play, which was also very much game script dependent. That's going to be how this play is as well. But we can see that the sports would be like, underdog is actually still overvaluing it compared to price so we are getting a pretty good line there it would seem especially when compared to the sports book so that is going to be a line that i think we can attack and really just in general that game is going to have some props that i think we want to be attacking just because it should be a pretty high scoring game so let's go ahead and touch on some other props that i like in that game so what i want to call out is going to be the snap counts for missouri okay we are seeing that really that's going to be the biggest edge especially in terms of receiver production so we do probably want to be chasing that a little bit and so the receiver that gets the most snaps is going to be theo here we can see basically getting a hundred percent of the snaps in every single game but when we look at it we're going to see we are getting three different missouri player props and so that's going to be luther here who has really just been crushing in terms of the over receiving yards and i think this is going to be a good one remember both teams are not that good at stopping the pass. That's why it's going to be a high scoring game. Um, I'll get into LSU in just a second, but if Theo's going to be playing that much in this high scoring game, it's tough for me to imagine him not being involved. He is a little bit more touchdown dependent. So maybe I don't think we are just yet. Yeah. But maybe if we end up getting like a fantasy score prop, I'd rather roll with that because he is a little bit more touchdown dependent or maybe like a combo one as well. A little bit more touchdown dependent. Then we also have Mookie Cooper here who over the last three games has been able to get that over and we can see the snaps have been kind of a little bit all over the place, but but if he's going to be playing 94% of the snaps, that's going to be appealing as well. Overall, we're just going to see that this game is probably going to be a game that we want to stack and attack. And so just looking at LSU, looking at their snap counts there as well, we're going to see that they are going to be receiver heavy in terms of snaps as well. Over 80%, we'll take that any day of the week there. And they have two players that I kind of like. They got Malik Neighbors, who really has been crushing it really the last three games there. And even still, like his production has been there in every single game. And really some 
of them that are popping up that I like is actually maybe this combo prop between Luther Burden and him. To me, I like that, and I'll sh and you guys kind of saw why because both of those two players can really go off for 150 yards, and then the other one doesn't really need to do as much. I kind of expect them both to have big games, and the data does as well. So I kind of like that combo prop. You're just more or less betting on one of them really going off saying that you don't know exactly which one it's going to be, but it really could be either them or both of them. If you want to go fantasy score, I don't blame you there, but it, it seems like to me the safest one, I don't like using that word, would be the combo prop. It's a good way to attack that game. And I really... Ooh, I think this guy, I think this got bumped to sick. Uh, but I really like all the props that we're getting here with Brian Thomas. Uh, once again, you could probably run out the combo prop here as well. He is someone that has been a pretty consistent uh, producer as well in terms of receiving yards. For them, I want to call out that the two games that were really blowouts, week three and week and week two, were the two games in which he didn't get his over receiving yards. Now he's still eight in terms of fantasy production, and he's gotten it over uh, four out of the past five slates. So if you guys want to roll with that, the fantasy points you could. But I wanted to call that out that really the only two games where he didn't crush the over were two games that were blowouts and like i said you could still do fantasy score it seems like either way he should be a good asset for us i don't really want to touch the receptions prop but that's kind of where we could just do this one as well like i think we just have a really good stack and opportunity this game so let's just show you guys my favorite stacks for this game so like for me this is a way that we could attack that game i do like the brian thomas one i'm gonna be rolling with that one and then we're gonna take that good ev bet that we have if you guys didn't want to use the quarterback props with that i get it I, it does feel we're probably overextending a little bit too much into this game by doing that but obviously we want to be running out a six slip bet when we are putting in the quarterbacks that's that's the reason why i'm doing that so if you guys didn't want to do it i get it and let's say you guys didn't want to do that then we would be running out a combo prop with luther here in some way okay so pretty appealing game right let's go ahead and move on into some other props that i like so i do like the prop line that we're getting for eric all the tight end for iowa and some people are going to hear that and be like, oh, that's ugly. You know, I was not doing too well, which I, I completely get. And we can see like for his production, it really hasn't exactly been there. Let, let's show you guys why, though. So first things first, I think we can expect him to be playing about 100% of the snaps. That is what we have been seeing from him recently. And that's mostly due to the fact that the starter really got injured early on in the season. And I also want to call it that their starting quarterback is also banged up. So that is kind of why the line feels to be a little bit too low. But really, this is a play on the matchup. When we go in and look at just every good matchup that we have on the site, it's not exactly going to be tight ends for Purdue. Like they're actually decent at guarding tight ends, but we look at every other matchup and Purdue is going to be a team that we are going to see that we want to be attacking with a player. And to me, th this was the best prop that we have to do that with. Now, we are more or less betting on the quarterback play, the backup quarterback play being good enough. Don't love that, but that could be a way that they go in and attack. Not lock and load. I just want to call that out. And then from there, two other ones that I want to call out as well. Well, it's going to be looking at this UCLA game because that is also going to be a decent matchup for uh, the receivers in this game for UCLA. And they all are also two players that do get a lot of snaps as well. So first and foremost, if we just look at like the DVP, we're going to notice that Washington, at least on this like main slate, if you will, main slate, it's betting. It's not exactly like this main slate compared to like DFS, but you guys get the point. Uh, we can see probably looking at the receivers having a good game. And when we look at it, like we can see both the receivers have been pretty successful in terms of their production uh, and pretty consistent as well. Maybe not, that's the running back. Um, maybe not looking at like fantasy score. Maybe we are just looking at like receiving yards uh, but it's gonna be up to you guys what you want to do there but let's look at like logan here for his we can see this game was a blowout they didn't need that much production last game against utah was a little bit more difficult was able to get the over there um i'm assuming this game was more or less a blowout there as well uh kind of another blowout as well let's actually take a peek at the game over and under here just to make sure that this is a decent one okay it is yes okay high scoring game we can see that with the 60 and a half for the over and under and we can also see three and a half point spread so Really, if that game stays close, like it's projected to, I do think we are going to see, and obviously it's going to be that high scoring, I do think we're going to see that production be funneled to both of those two receivers just because they are on the field a lot. That is kind of how I want to go about attacking that. And then lastly, I also like Collins for over receiving yards as well. This is very much a matchup based thing. Now, I do need to start out with looking at the over and under for this game and the spread because I'm pretty sure that this game is supposed to be a blowout. Yeah, 21 points. Okay, and I, I think that's a good call out that I, I want to just echo is that because a lot of their games, especially early on, were blowouts, I feel like there is more inconsistent production there. So definitely 
far from a lock and load but this is another one of those where we are really just chasing the matchup against wake forest they have a clear weakness against receivers collins is going to be someone that's going to be on the field a lot and so that's why i personally like that prop now let's just go ahead and show you guys the best prop bets on prize picks and underdog and so really what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go through the sheet and show you guys here it's as simple as that so um i'll show you guys my favorite ones as we're going through this but by all means it's up to you guys how you see this fit so uh, we can see Henderson for under fantasy points. Um, we we can kind of clearly see that there is some strangeness going on with these lines. I'm actually curious if this is going to be one that pops up as a good over bet on underdog, and that might be the approach I go with. And I say that because you can see the, the sportsbook line has a set at 15. Prize picks has a set at 18. The projection data likes it at 24. And then underdog has a set at 14.7. So definitely an if you align in general that does happen a little bit more with college football just because um every sports book kind of has different lines and how they see a game is going to go whereas like nba there's there's very little distinction and even nfl as well um we got dylan gabriel for under rush yards and we can see yeah that's probably a pretty good bet there especially in comparison to all the other books uh this one might be one that is taken away by the time you guys get there but 24 and a half we can see underdog has a set at 20.5 projection data at 16.3 and then the sportsbooks have it set at 21. i think it's worth calling out the sportsbook have it set at 21 and it's basically a 50 50. okay that is that's an appealing one to me and that, let's just go take a look at the game log here all right so the line is set at 24 right now 24 and a half we can see only would have gone that one and yes it's probably due to a lot of sacks and whatnot like that it's a little bit more difficult to predict i don't i do think we can get a big edge on like the rushing props for quarterbacks in both nfl and college football but college football becomes a sweat with the, the sacks and stuff but that's that's really a good ev bet that we have as well we got alec alex bullock here receiving yards set at 17.5 this is another situation where we can see prize picks is clearly higher than everyone else that's a good under bet another one will howard you know where all three other sources that i'm looking at are all saying this line by prize picks is too high so that's another pretty good one that we're getting uh jordan or jonathan brooks here i find this one to be fascinating as well uh because i do think maybe this would be a better bet on underdogs maybe bet the over rather than the under here's one that's going to get bumped and i'm actually going to pause this video so i can go ahead and make this just because we can see a lot of the sports books are favoring at minus 145 so 55 percent likelihood for burden to get over 7.5 receptions we can see the projection data likes that 9.4 as well um so yeah i just i'm gonna pause and make that bet real quick and now maybe that's a line that adjusts you know throughout the morning tomorrow and it becomes a less favorable bet but right now it's looking like it's gonna get bumped up to eight so i'm gonna be taking uh, advantage of that and then looking at this we have some other good fantasy score props and personally guys i really like looking at these ones where we are getting some good over fantasy score props so once again with malik here LSU receiver we're seeing that the over fantasy score is actually going to be one that we are liking as a good edge on the slate and another one as well for Oklahoma we got Drake there for over fantasy points as well that's one that's popping up we got another one popping up for Kansas State DJ for over 13.5 fantasy points we can see compared to the other markets that's another one where we are seemingly gaining a pretty big edge there and darn it that that game's on uh I refresh this in between uh that game's on Friday night so disregard that but yeah just looking at these other ones that we have out there then these two were ones that were better early on today and have since adjusted a little bit right here they're at like 55 to start the day now they're down to 53 if you guys want to roll with those by all means go ahead uh let's just take a quick peek at underdog and i'll begin out of here and giving you guys a bet slip and guys i don't feel the need to go through this again so i'm just gonna pull this up here for you guys if you guys see a profit that you want to go in and make you feel like there's a good edge there on underdog by all means go ahead and make those i'm just gonna leave this up here for a second and then be showing you guys my favorite bets for prize picks this week so here's one that i already have out there if you guys want to roll with this you can you know if the lines are still the same all right so these are going to be the current best bets that we have available for sun or saturday for the college football site i did toss in this one for Brees hall just because that's the best ev bet that we have available currently for nfl that was really just the next best bet so if you guys don't want to use that by all means you can i would say these three right here just make more sense in the game stack because that's really what we're betting on is that game being high scoring this one is very much touchdown dependent for henderson obviously if he's scoring touchdowns multiple then that's really not going to hit it's really up to you guys to decide there uh this one you know hasn't hit that much this season that's a good ev bet that we have just to remind you guys i do really like the ucla ones as well that we're getting those two receivers there that's gonna be all for this video if you guys want access to that 95 cheat sheet is available for just ten dollars a month
If you guys want access to that Odds Jam Sports Review, make sure to be clicking the link in the description below as well. I uh, use the promo code 9 to 5 to get 25% off there. That's going to be all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.